Hello everyone, in today's video we will show you how to create a stylized water shader graph. This shader graph will have a lot of features to be controlled, for example, you can control the color of the water depths, so there are shallow water color and there is deep water color. Also in this shader graph you will be able to control the water refraction, so how refracted is the scene behind the water. So you can control the refraction speed, refraction strength, and the scale of the texture. Additionally, this shader graph have a controls for the foam. So as you can see, everything touches the water, creates a foam around it. So welcome again to another shader graph tutorial brought to you by Binary Lunar. This is Ramiz al -Tabba and let's get started. Create a new Unity project using the Universal Render Pipeline and let's name it Stylized Water Shader Graph. For this scene, I used a free asset from Unity Asset Store called Stylized Environment. I'll provide the link down in the description if you want to download it. Import that asset to your scene. Let's go to the scene provided by that free asset. You'll see some materials have been colored because they are not upgraded yet to be used in the Universal Rendering Pipeline. So let's go to File, Render Pipeline and upgrade those materials for Universal Render Pipeline. The terrain also still pink, so simply we need to go to the terrain settings and change its default material to something else you prefer. Let's remove some game objects which we will not use and adjust the camera for a better view. Before we start building the shader graph, we need to adjust the project settings because we are using the depth texture and opaque texture to go to file project settings, then to graphics, click on the rendering pipeline that currently active, then check on the opaque and depth textures. Now let's create a new game object, a cube game object, name it water and adjust its size to cover a good portion of our scene. In this video I'll show you a new technique in shader graph nodes. Since this shader graph will have many nodes, it's better to create sub shader graph to reuse some repeated nodes and avoid getting spaghetti nodes inside our shader graph. So let's create sub shader graph, let's name it Debs Fade. We will use that twice in this shader graph so it's better to keep things organized and clean. The depth fade will fade uh, the game object between two colors based on its depth. So to calculate the water depth, we need the screen position and the scene depth. The screen position represents where the game object is located and we can access its space coordination by getting the alpha channel from the row screen position. Then we deduct it from the scene depth to get the water depths. Then let's divide the water depths by a distance we choose. So let's create a new parameter vector one, name it distance, set the default value to zero. So we'll be able to change it in the main shader. This is the sub shader. Then we saturate the value to be between 0 and 1 and we link that to the output you can name rename the output to output and set it to vector 1 now our sub shader graph is ready let's create our main shader graph so right click in the project create shader and this time we will create unlit graph let's name it stylized water open that shader graph and the first thing we need to do is to change the surface from opaque to transparent so we get transparent water of course then simply add the depth fade subgraph we created then create a new parameter vector1 water depth set the default value to 10 link it to the depth fade then link the depth fade to color 
go back to the scene and now you still can't see anything change because we didn't create a material nor applied it to our water game object so let's create a new material name it stylized water then drag the shader graph to it to apply the shader on the material then drag the material on the water game object now we can see we got this depth fade between black and white so you can say it's something like fog currently and we need to apply colors to it to be like water so let's create two new color properties let's name first one shallow water and the other one deep water first one can be a light blue with alpha set to maximum currently and the second one the deep water should be dark blue and set off both of them to maximum alpha currently then create a lerp node to lerp between the shallow water color to deep water color based on the depth fade and link the results to the color now we got this nice gradient between the shallow water color and the deep water color you can of course change those from the material property since now they are part of the shader so feel free to play with the water colors before we proceed with building the shader graph let's create another sh shader graph which will save us space and organize our nodes uh, it's called movement sub shader graph we will use that to control the movement of any texture and its scale over time so create a new sub shader graph let's name it movement and inside it let's create the following we need to move the texture a long time so we need a time node and we also need a vector one parameter called speed to control the speed over time we multiply both the time and the speed then we add tiling and offset node when we link those to the offset we can also control the scale of the texture by creating a new parameter scale and link it to the tiling in the tiling and offset node then link the results to output rename the output to out and set its value to vector2 since the output is vector2 value save the subgraph go back to our main shader the stylized water and let's organize things by grouping the current node related to the color and rename the group to color water color now we will create all the nodes related to the transparency of water and the distortion of the scene behind it so let's start by the subgraph we just created the movement subgraph so add that to the shader graph uh, then we need two nodes one speed one for scale so first one would be the refraction speed and link it to speed on the movement let's set the default value to 0 0.5 then we need another parameter to control the scale of the refraction texture so it's a vector one let's name it refraction scale and link it to the scale on the movement then we will use this movement node to move the gradient noise node over time so create a gradient noise node sets a scale to 20 currently and link the movement to the uv on it then we need a normal from height node that will create the refraction for us because it will control the normal of each point based on the height the height here represents by white and black values black zero height and white represents the maximum height for each point that will create the refraction for our water and we can control the refraction strength by creating a new vector1 parameter name it refraction strength and multiply that with the normal from height then we need a screen position node to get the coordinates of each point on the water then we add to it the normal from height to increase or decrease the position of each point based on the gradient noise height and to get the colors from behind the water we need a scene color node and simply we link the last node to it 
Of course, to keep things organized, we can group all the nodes related to the water refraction and name them water refraction. And now we need to create a lerp node to lerp between the water refraction and water color based on the water alpha. When I got back to the scene, I didn't find any transparency nor refraction in my scene and that's because we set the alpha of the colors to maximum if you remember so you can go to both colors and adjust each one alpha maybe to 50 percent or 25 for the shallow water and 50 for the deep water and now you can see the transparency of water and the refraction effect of it the water refraction is too fast, so let's reduce it from 1 to 0 0.05. Now let's go back to the shader graph and add the final feature, which is the foam. So we can start by adding the depth fade node, which is a subgraph we already created. And we can control the foam amount by adding a vector1 parameter and link it to the depth fade. We can also control the foam cutoff to decide where it should be visible on the surface of water by creating a vector1 parameter called foam cutoff, set the default value for now to 1 and multiply it with the depth fade results. We will create the foam using gradient noise node, set the scale to 1 and then add the movement subgraph we already created and link it to the UV of the gradient noise. Create two new parameters, one foam speed and another one the foam scale to control the speed of the foam and the scale of the texture of it. Set the foam speed to 1 and the foam scale to 100 and you can see now the gradient noise started to move. Then we will use a step node to control where the foam should be shown on the surface of the water based on the foam cutoff. And to control the foam color, we can simply add a color parameter, let's name it foam color. And for now, we will use currently the alpha of it because to control the transparency of the foam. So split the foam color and get the alpha channel from it and multiply it with the step node. Now we need to create a lerp from the water color to the foam color based on the foam color transparency. And finally, we need to replace the lerp from the water color with the lerp from the new foam color by linking the lerp from the foam color to the split, then linking the lerp from the foam color to the lerp related to the transparency of the scene. And that's it for today's shader graph video. You can now control the foam amount, the foam cutoff, where should you see the foam on the surface of the water. You can also control the foam speed and the foam scale, which means the texture of the foam. And of course you can control the foam color and transparency. And of course you can control all the other parameters we created throughout this video. So you can control the water depth, the shallow water color and transparency, the deep water color and transparency, the refraction speed, the refraction scale, the refraction strength, and all the parameters related to foam. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching and special thanks to our supporters on Patreon, Andrew Stemfield, Olex G. Pix, Ryan Rena, Dimitri Vasiliev, Breadman, Joshua Kratoshville, Little Fox, Parker Nelson, Giacomo Mariani, and Falcon Jazz, Jace Lefever, Pedro Transons, Jens Valentine, Kojo Apuni, Rick Japowski, Jack Ristel, and Mohamed Aiden. Till next video, see you soon.